Hello all and welcome, and I am the MGTOW Philosopher, and in this video I would like to talk about whether or not men are turning into second-class citizens, and that's the title of this article anyway. I would argue that men have been second-class citizens for quite some time, and this article makes a very strong case for that. In fact, if you ask me, it makes a definitive finding of that fact. So if we look at this chart from 2010, we can see United States incarceration rates, number of people incarcerated per 100,000. Now, if you look at men, good Lord, it's 1,352 per 100,000. That is an astonishingly high number. If we look at women, 126. <laughs> Holy crap! So, on the left, I mean, that just looks... The, 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 the disparity here is unbelievable. You look, and it's hard to fathom. It's like, wait a second, what's going on here? Is, is this possible? I mean, is this really possible? You look at this, you hear people say, oh, no, men are oppressive. Men are in charge of everything. It's a patriarchy. Really? Well, if it was a patriarchy, then wouldn't men have designed it so that they benefit in some way and are not... <laughs> <laughs> going to jail at rates that are 12, 13 times higher than women. Oh, but then you can say, well, men are committing 12, 13, 14 times more of the crimes. But are they? Hmm. Let's get to the meat of this story and see, shall we? And this article was written December 5th, 2017, so it's very recent. Over the years, men have been subject to relentless propaganda that women are the oppressed class. No kidding. We have been taught to buy into the gender pay gap myth, to believe that toxic masculinity is a scourge on society, and that men are responsible for all domestic violence and sex crimes. Yeah, a huge lie. Politicians, mainstream media, courts, and the permanent bureaucracy composed of a few elites with self-serving interests have permitted legislation and policies to level the playing field for women. But the playing field is anything but level. Well, of course. I mean, when you have one group that is markedly superior to the other, biologically, you cannot additively uh, make them equal. You have to subtract from the superior class to thereby make the inferior class able to compete against them. The result, equal rights for women does not translate into equal treatment for men. Of course not. <laughs> you have to disenfranchise one group to enfranchise the other. Men are now officially second-class citizens, and most of the developed world no longer enjoy the same privileges and immunities as women. You got that right. Facts show that men are actually far worse off in developed nations than women. Very interesting. Men are 14 times more likely. Now, I want you to read that again because it's such a shocking number. It might not register at first. Listen to me again. Men are 14 times more likely to be incarcerated and spend time in prison than women. Does anybody out there really believe that men are committing crimes at a rate that's 14 times greater than women? I'm going to show you later that they are not. The criminal justice system is designed to prosecute, I would say persecute, and incarcerate men even though women are equally or more guilty of crimes such as child abuse, child neglect, domestic violence, and prostitution. Yes, no question. Ah, it gets better, it gets better. Men are five to ten times more likely to commit suicide in developed nations. Of course they are because the oppression, the real oppression that they're having to deal with, uh, as compared to the faux oppression that women say they had to deal with so that they could seize power, is tremendous because most of the mental health counseling and social services are funded, of course, for women. Of course they are. As I've said before, women cannot help themselves. When they get the opportunity, they will overwhelmingly steal every single bit of power and resources for themselves and leave everybody else, meaning men, with nothing. Men are suffering in silence and are taking their lives at astounding rates. Men are much more likely to die earlier in life than women because they hold the majority of dangerous jobs, construction, military, mining, and suffer more stress-related diseases such as heart attacks and strokes. Oh, but I thought that men were privileged and the patriarchy was making men these long-lived people outliving women and uh, 
the women were killing themselves more and going to jail more than men. Where, where's the oppression against women? I'm, I'm trying hard to see it, but I'm just not seeing it. Goes on to say, women have dominated college enrollment and graduation, graduation, graduation rates since the 1980s due to affirmative action policies that lower standards for, standards for women and punish young men attempting to get degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math. Yes, women are almost 70% of college enrollment, while men, well, <laughs> around uh, uh, 30%, 30, 32, it's really bad now. The rise of women's studies, yes, a useless subject, and gender studies programs have also had a discriminatory effect on admissions and degrees. Of course, it's teaching women and men alike that men are evil and toxic, so we want more women. Yeah, as those programs are exclusively centered, catered towards women. Young men are also the overwhelming, overwhelming target of sexual assault, which hunts on college campuses. Well, if you want to gain power, the best way to do it is to create the oppressor, oppressed, BS, and then uh, uh, set the dogs of war on the so-called oppressors via things like witch hunts and such. Yeah, but we're oppressors, right? We're not oppressed. Men ages 18 to 26 must still register for mandatory selective service in the U.S., but not women. Because of equal rights lawsuits, women are now voluntarily allowed to occupy any position in the military. That's right, any position. But when it comes to mandatory, mandatory selective service draft, only men are forced to enroll and die for their country. Not women. Of course not. Why, why, why aren't the women out there lobbying to get included in the selective service? I thought that they were all about equality. They wanted all the same rights and privileges as men, right? Well, they want the privileges, but they don't want to have the responsibilities, it seems. To continue, it's estimated that only 3% of alimony recipients are men. <laughs> Even though we know as a fact that women now are making more money than men, uh, generally speaking. Although middle and upper class women are Equally represented in the workforce, they are extracting a whopping 97% of the total alimony and child support payments. Most men who go through a divorce will lose just about everything. Gee, so far in this article, it seems like the entire system is tilted against men, and yet we're supposed to be the ones sitting on the top of the pyramid dictating everything that happens. And, of course, if you're a person at the top of that pyramid dictating every little thing that happens, then you would design every little thing that happens and enfranchise you, not to disenfranchise you. <sighs> Men are more likely to be targeted in employment discrimination. Yes, because you're a man. <laughs> Sexual harassment, sexual assault, rape, and domestic violence claims and will suffer the disproportionate loss of jobs, income, life, liberty, and property as a result of these claims. Although the media tends to focus on high-profile men, millions of other men whose stories are untold are suffering worse fates because they lose the only source of their basic livelihood to these types of allegations. 70% 70, 70 or more of the homeless population is male. That number is actually incorrect. This is 2010. Maybe some things have changed, but this guy hasn't done his research thoroughly. My research shows that it's 90% or more. Yes, 90%. Now, he may be including people who are in shelters as well or being taken care of by the many, many feminist-funded women's shelters. If he's doing that, well, then maybe you get a number of 70%. But the men who are living on the street, actual homeless, 90-plus percent. Yeah, those men that don't have, uh, you know, feminist organizations funding homeless shelters where men are not allowed to stay and have to live on the street and sleep in a cardboard box. So what do you think so far? Does it sound like to this point that men are in some way benefiting from some kind of male privilege that they would have from a patriarchy? I don't think so. Article goes on to say, so... What do men do about this dismal state of affairs? Most men who are not blogging in the manosphere, including our politicians, are too afraid to say anything about the second-class status of males, of course, because women are the voters. Too many men are afraid of the Me Too backlash to speak up. Yeah, they'll be accused of being racist, sexist, uh, misogynistic. However, our collective silence complaining and inaction will continue to allow feminist groups to dominate the discussion and set policies and agendas that drive men further into decay. Right. 
Men, by and large, are pussies that are afraid of women. Imagine that. Here's some concrete steps we can take in our everyday lives to call out the injustice against men and to attempt to level the playing field. Good luck with that. Do not allow women to use their sexual powers to dominate you. Bingo! MGTOW! <laughs> ding, 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 ding! That is the answer. Men have allowed their rights to be stripped from them because they are beholden to women for sex. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch of pussy white knights. Ooh, I got to have that vagina, so I'm going to give away everything. Of course, got all these pussy wimps who get their first piece of ass at 20, 25. Bunch of pussies didn't get laid when they were earlier, and they wait until they get older because they were so beholden to women, and they were so putting them on a pedestal, and they thought they were so wonderful and all that. Oh, they put them on that pedestal, and they worshipped at their feet, and so, of course, they didn't get laid. And then by the time they did get laid, they said, oh, geez, Jesus, this is the only piece of ass I'm going to get. I should marry her. Yeah, and you marry her at 20, 25 years old. And then by the time you're 30, 35, 40, you're divorced and you have nothing and you didn't pursue your dreams and your life is over. Now you are not the rich, successful guy you could have been. You are a shell that never was. Free yourself of sexual coercion and you will be able to think more clearly about your rights and freedom. Very, very good advice. Number two, report any instances of sexual harassment, sexual battery, domestic violence, child neglect, child abuse, etc. caused by women. Absolutely. See, this is one of the problems with men. Men tend to not report things women do. That's why women are actually so underrepresented in the number of arrests and women in prison to begin with. Not only because male judges and the system tend to look at women as guiltless, but they also don't accuse them of crimes when they commit them to begin with. They just shrug it off, let women get away with it. That's oftentimes the case. Trust me, the numbers that don't match up and you say, oh, men commit so many more crimes. No, no, they really don't. It's just that men don't report these crimes out of shame. Okay, you say, oh, men are accused of violent crimes more than women. It's only because men don't want to be made fun of and shamed by the public if they were to report that their woman beat them up or something or abused them, okay? It's all about shame and not wanting to be shamed as a man that women get away with so much. Goes on to say, how minor or egregious to the authorities and demand prosecution and accountability. Men are far too reluctant to voice these complaints for fear of having their masculinity questioned. Right, that's what I just said. Women, however, readily take advantage of the system, and men's failure to report women has fueled the myth that only men of the abusers have violate these laws. If you do not report women, you are fueling the problem. 100% true. Stop being a pussy, white knight, wimp mangina. When a woman does something, she wants to be equal. You treat her just like you would a man. Number three, avoid closed-door meetings and one-on-one -on -one sessions with women at work. This will only open you up to opportunities for false allegations. Absolutely, 100% accurate. Don't be alone with women in the workplace. Never, ever, 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 ever. Number four, avoid hiring and promoting feminists if you can do so legally. Absolutely. People who, you see, feminists, by and large, hate men. We're not talking about like, oh, this is a particular type of man. No, they, they hate all men. Masculinity itself, the embody, embodiment of what makes a man a man, they hate. They hate what you are. They hate everything about you. They have a hateful, evil ideology. Okay? You cannot promote people like this if you know what they are. They're evil and they are members of a death cult. Feminism is a death cult. I readily believe that. I've always believed that. You look very closely at feminism. The end result is the destruction of civilizations and the deaths of millions of people. Women, especially radicalized feminists, are dominating the workforce and taking control of companies, political positions, positions, etc. Right, because they are ideologues and they see any opportunity they get within society, any type of status they get, as an opportunity to push their agenda, push their religion of feminism. Okay, and that has to be stopped due to policies that wildly favor them. In the current climate, women have better and more opportunities than men with the same education. Yeah, twice as much opportunity. And they're taking full advantage of it to the detriment of men. Right. Women are very collectivist. Men do not seem to care very much about fighting for the rights of other men. It's part of the reason why men's rights activism, activism has been so much of a failure. That and the fact that women control... <laughs> <laughs> the system through their voting, 
And they're the majority of voters, so you got no chance anyway. Uh, men need to start looking out for each other and help men. Yeah, good luck with that, pal. Men are like trying to herd cats, okay? Not going to happen, all right? We definitely don't need to promote people like these bitches. No question. Next, do not fight or argue with women. I agree with this one. It's good advice. You're not going to win an argument with a woman anyway because they don't use logic and reason. They use emotion. You can give the best argument in the world and say, oh, oh, that's, yeah, 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 you're a misogynist, you're a woman hater. Ha, that's not true. That's not true. You could show them it's true. Oh, your facts are wrong. Ha, you can't win. You'll only be opening yourself up to some sort of abuse allegations if the relationship goes south. Instead, document your woman partner's irrational behavior. Oh, better yet, don't have a woman partner. See, my solution solves all these problems. MGTOW's solution solves all these problems. You don't have a partner. At, at, at best, you pump them and dump them. Or you have nothing to do with them at all. Then you solve the problem. Yes, document your woman partner's irrational behavior in any instances of abuse towards you. Develop a file with text messages, pictures, emails, etc. that you can use later against the woman if she appears she's ready to turn on you. Or... Dumper and go MGTOW. <laughs> That's the best solution. Next, pay attention to the politicians and judges you are electing. Find out whether these people are supporting irrational women's rights. That's all of them. That's practically all of them. And their voting records. Get the word out. To, if they're not, they won't get elected. Get the word out to your friends, family, community, elect politicians, judges who are responsible to support equal rights, not feminist agendas. <laughs> so some of this is good advice and some of it is MRA advice. And I talked about this in my video, Men's Rights Activism and Why It's a Failure or Why It's a Waste of Time. It's under my original content playlist because it is a waste of time. You have no chance. Women are collectivists. They vote more than men and there's more of them. Even if you were to get every man in America to vote, they still would be outvoted by the women. Uh, and by the way, good luck getting every man in America to vote without women getting wind of it, and then they all turn up to vote, and then they outvote you. You have no chance. No chance at all. This is the kind of stuff I argue against because men's rights organizations, all these types of proactive organizations that go out into the community and do stuff, they have to organize. They have to form into groups. And bingo, you made yourself a target. You can now be infiltrated. And because women are the only ones that are allowed – the, to criticize other women, they're the only ones that can affect positive change in the society. So you have to let women into your groups to somehow validate your arguments and your movement in your group, as well as to get any change done. But by letting them in, they are infiltrating you and they will destroy you with their solipsism, with their feminism. They will destroy you. And number seven, get the word out to your friends, family, and colleagues that men are suffering as second-class citizens. This, see, this, this is the kind of stuff I warn guys against. Don't do this stuff. It's a waste of time. Go make towel. Yeah, warn the men are uh, suffering as second-class citizens, but don't make yourself a target. Look, men, you have to look out for numero uno, and guess who that is? Well, it ain't the other guy. It's you. You have to look out for yourself in this world. And by the way, if everybody looked out for themselves— there would be no starvation, virtually no starvation. I mean, you'd have fucking crippled people and you would have retards and shit who couldn't take care of themselves. And you'd have old people that needed their Depends diapers. But otherwise, the majority of people would be able to take care of themselves if they just looked out for themselves. But you've got lazy people, you've got ideologues, you've got people who have been brainwashed like feminists and leftists, okay? And you've got a system that essentially incentivizes laziness and sloth with welfare. So, eh! You know, there's a lot of people out there who are going to be against you, who are going to target you if you try to change the status quo that benefits them. And right now, they are the ones in power. They're the ones with the vote. The system enfranchises them. It's like the slave trying to use the system of slavery to free himself. Well, it's not set up to enfranchise him. It's set up to enfranchise the slave master, you pinheads. So you're not going to have any luck. So do not waste your time with this men's rights activism BS. Look after yourself. Protect yourself. OK, unless you're trying to red pill some guy that you know you can trust who's not going to rat your ass out to people you work with or are close to you who could then try to oppress you, uh, try to give you a hard time at work, make your life difficult. Unless that's the case and you know you're talking to somebody you can trust, keep your views to yourself and live for you. OK, and wait for the end times to come, which will be 30 
40 years, unfortunately, because we've globalized the American debt so much that we're just going to be able to print money for quite some time before inflation reaches the point where a loaf of bread is going to cost a billion dollars and the system's going to collapse like Venezuela. Unfortunately, it's going to take a long time because America's very rich and because we've globalized our debt to such an extent. It will happen. It is inevitable. It's called economics. Do some research on it, but it's going to take a long time, unfortunately. Uh, so he continues to go on, share these posts with your network and social media contacts. And, uh, okay. Uh, as long as you're anonymous, don't share these posts with network and social media contacts who know you who you are, though. You don't want to identify yourself as a MGTOW on social media. Otherwise, the social justice warriors will come after you, okay? Especially with people who are neutral. Right. Neutral meaning they don't know who you're that and who don't know who you are. Feminists have done a great job. How many neutral people are there left, really? Not so many. Most are polarized on one side or the other. Feminists have done a great job of converting these people to their side. Yeah, they own the country. They own the education system. They own the media. They own the government. Oh, you think they've been successful? I think so. They've had several generations to indoctrinate people. Yeah, because men have not provided counterpoints and arguments over this. Right, but it's too late now. Okay, the time for counterpoints and fighting back are done. They're over. The enemy beat you. He has already established a ruling government, okay, and a ruling system. He already has troops on the ground. He already has feet on the ground. He already has the entire system serving him. You are not going to be able to affect any real change without an actual revolutionary uprise, some kind of military action. So uh, bad advice goes on to say, it's important that we speak up and speak out without fearing reprisal. No, <laughs> no we need the fear. What are you talking about without fear and reprisal? Okay, so I let people know who I am. The social justice warriors come after me. I'd lose clients. I'd lose business. I might lose my business. Then I'd lose everything. Oh, yeah, I've really got a platform now to have a voice. No, I've just lost everything. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Don't fear reprisal. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> Come on, pal. Get, get the hell out of here. Yeah, you need to fear reprisal. Don't listen to this guy. See, I'm posting this article both to give you some good points and some counterpoints that are bad from the point of view of a men's rights activist. And this guy is clearly a men's rights activist. He hasn't been red-pilled fully. He doesn't seem to understand that the system itself is set up to disenfranchise men. That system by its very nature, exists for that purpose. You can't then make that system, <laughs> okay, serve you, okay? It's like trying to take a car that was built to run on, oh, say, I don't know, gasoline, and now make it run on honey. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> How do you run a go fucking car on honey? How does that work? We don't have the technology for that. We couldn't retrofit this car to do that. No way. You can't use honey as fuel. Well, men can't use their grievances and themselves and their status as second class citizens. They're second class citizens. We can't use our status as an oppressed person, actually oppressed, to affect change, okay? Because the system isn't set up for that, and there's no way that's going to work. So the only way that you can affect change is to not participate in that which is enslaving you. Do not enfranchise that system. Deprive it of as many resources as you possibly can. Yeah, we need to fear reprisal. Uh, and I don't feel guilty for supporting men. Are you kidding me? I support men all the time. I have my channel. I make lots and lots of videos, and I try to red pill as many men as I can. It's a pain in the ass. I'd rather not do it, but here I am. It takes a lot of time. But again, here I am. Your method will not work, okay? Will not. There's something that's called effective use of time and resources, okay? I mean, this is like throwing golf balls at, at a, a six-foot thick <laughs> concrete wall. Yeah. Oh, someday I'm going to break through it with them freaking golf balls. Yeah, they're going to break that thing down. It might take a million years. Oh, I'll be dead by then. <laughs> Maybe my kids, 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 kids. I don't know how many fucking kids, kids, kids I'm going to have to count before one of them breaks through that wall with that fucking golf ball. Are you kidding me? It's a waste of time. What you're talking about here in this regard is a waste of time. And some of this advice was very good, and I pointed that out, and that's why I wanted to cover this article, especially the huge disparities in the number of men versus women incarcerated. 
But some of this advice is very bad, and when you hear this advice, you have to recognize it for the bad advice it is and recognize that you're listening to a men's rights activist and that he is essentially wasting his time. Wasting his time. Period. Men's rights activism is a fail. Check out my original content video on it. It'll explain in much greater detail. In conclusion, men have become disposable second-class citizens and have allowed themselves to accept this fate. Uh, I don't accept it. I'm fighting back in the only way that's possible. I have recognized the red pill reality and the fact that the system is in no way going to allow me to change it because the system as it exists would stop existing if I change it. And the system wants to continue to exist, okay? It doesn't want to be killed, all right? So it's going to fight back against me. And it's got all the power, and I have no power, okay? And the only way that I could fight back is in the form of a vote. And I don't have as many votes as the women. It's that simple, really. The biased media reporting and political airways are filled with propaganda that paints women as the oppressed class, which they obviously are not, when the reality is quite the opposite. However, most men have become far too docile, you got that right, and accepting of the current state of affairs and our inaction is only making things well. <laughs> you are mistaking. Now, I, I know he's not talking about MGTOW men because you are mistaking what we're doing as some form of inaction. No, we're taking an action. It's just not the action you want us to take. That's all. It's making things worse for us. Please help level the playing field by helping men. That's what I'm doing, and I'm doing it in the only way I can, and MGTOW men are doing it in the only way that will be effective, by walking away. I'm sorry that you don't see that. This guy is right on every single one of his points about how disenfranchised men are and how we are the oppressed, not the oppressor. He's got it all right in that regard, but his solutions, many of them are bad. Some of them are good, but many of his proactive solutions are bad. MGTOW is about going your own way, about depriving the system of your resources as much as possible. They already suck a, enough taxes out of us, but it's not enough to support the women's, okay? All right, that's why they want us to, they want us to get married and, and put more, create more debt, buy a house, buy a car, have kids, more debt, more debt, get divorced. Now I have to support two households. I, then I become a total debt slave to the system, working until I'm dead from exhaustion. And I have slaved away for the system to create more debt for them. It's all about creating debt, okay? That's what the big banks, the big elites want. That's all they want, and they found the most efficient way to do it is to pander to women. And women outnumber men anyway, and they outnumber us even more because we're killing ourselves in record numbers because of how oppressed we are. So it allows them to keep a stranglehold on power. It's win-win for them, lose-lose for us men. And you don't solve the problem by trying to fight a system that is totally dedicated to your enslavement and will never, ever lift a finger to help you because it's surviving and thriving by not helping you. Please figure that out, men out there. MGTOW is the only way to solve this problem. Please like and subscribe and donate to my Patreon if you feel so inclined. You'll find a link both in the description of this video and in the last 20 seconds. I am the MGTOW philosopher and I wish you a good day. Take care.